Andre, just another great presentation. Um, we're, we're going to shift gears a little bit here and I'm really excited about our next speaker. Really excited, not only to have her here, but also excited for the career change that she recently went through. Big moves, and I'll talk about that in a moment in her, uh, in her introduction. But we're, we're going to shift and talk a little bit about long-term athlete development perspectives. And Dawn has, in her previous life, spent so much time uh, focusing in on coach development and long-term athlete development and is taking those concepts to her new role. So Don Smythe is the international grassroots basketball lead for the NBA and is responsible for developing and promoting basketball around the world. She recently made a significant career and personal life shift to this position that involved moving to New York City. Prior to her, to her work with the NBA, Dawn was Director of Domestic Development for Canada Basketball and was responsible for several portfolios, including the development and maintenance of their NCCP coaching programs and led that sport's long-term development initiatives. Dawn is also a published author and you can pick up her co-authored book, Play Better Basketball at Chapters Indigo or on Amazon. Dawn is speaking to us today on her perspectives on long-term development. Coaches, let's welcome Dawn Smythe. Thanks, Wayne. Uh, it's great to see you. It's been a little while and uh, great to be a part of this. Just really want to acknowledge uh, all three of you for putting this together. I think we've all been looking at pivots at this time. Um, you know, everyone's going through different hardships around the world and my heart goes out to um, everyone who's really uh, working their way through it. But I really want to acknowledge you for, for helping us with that and providing this platform. I uh, also wanted to say hi and acknowledge uh, those friends that have tuned in uh, from Canada, um, but also around the world and just acknowledge you for, for being a part of a growth mindset and, and spending time today, you know, whatever you had to go, uh, you know, get up and do or, or take time away from family and friends to be able to be here. So just really want to acknowledge you for taking the time um, you know, to, to being a part of this as well. And those friends that I haven't met yet, I look forward to meeting you at some point in time when we can um, circulate the world and, and start to share and collaborate in person again. So um, like you said, uh, you know, I've made this huge move to New York right at uh, pinnacle time and uh, been able to experience uh, New York City. And, you know, I've got the opportunity also, uh, and I know one of your sponsors uh, for this program is, um, you know, sport for life and, and really starting to blend what's going on uh, around the world and work specifically with junior MBA and, and then you've NBA grassroots programs and long term athlete development. Um, so really excited to share some of these perspectives uh, with the group today. So I just want to start with junior NBA and this will come full circle here uh, by the end, but you know, really uh, working with grassroots programs around the world, uh, you know, integrating some of these like four core concepts uh, into grassroots, into all the different um, uh, avenues. And so, um, you know, really want to improve this experience. And I know, you know, several speakers, you know, that have been able to enjoy this morning have started to talk about, you know, creating experience and, and what does that look like? So, um, you know, this is where I think the LTAD, which I think we've all been exposed to in, in some format, but, you know, how can we really live it? How can we really apply it? How do we make it, um, you know, jump off a page and not be a document? And so, you know, the use that we're looking and what I'm talking about is, uh, you know, you know, got a chance to integrate and, and work with the youth in Canada, but now we're talking about um, millions. And so, um, you know, last year it was 51 million. This year we're looking at 60.4 million and working in 75 countries. And so, um, you know, really trying to look at how does the long-term pathway look like um, and what does grassroots look like in order to allow for basketball to be uh, and athlete development to be there for, for all these places. So, you know, it shows up in different ways. It shows up in leagues and school programs, camps, clinics, um, you know, very similar to other sports. It comes out in, in you know, various formats, but it's certainly um, a little bit of a larger uh, group that uh, we're looking at. And so it's even more important to really have the perspective of LTAD. And so just wanted to share, I didn't wanna leave this conversation without providing some additional resources. And so, you know, the LTAD, um, 
you know, has been a resource for, I know, a lot of Canadian coaches and the Canadian government has done a wonderful job and Sport for Life has, has worked tirelessly, as mentioned, you know, with online resources in order to get it into the hands um, and, and therefore impacting athletes um, and athletes, um, you know, projected uh, relationship around physical activity. Um, and so there is a guide that you can get. I, I highly recommend uh, you grabbing it. And that's just the photo of it there. Um, wrong direction. I also, you know, want to give a shout out to Canada basketball and, you know, all sports in Canada had to integrate it, but um, Canada basketball also has, um, you know, a document where, it, you know, the, the LTAD standing alone uh, has weight, but it, it only starts to really get power once it gets integrated to a sport environment. And so um, at basketball.ca on their website, you can also go and check out, you know, a sportified version of the LTAD and, um, you know, check out what's going on and, and how, to, how do you actually take it, um, put it into perspective of the sport. So um, I know uh, this has had a huge success, uh, you know, or huge, um, you know, been a huge impact for the success for basketball in Canada. Uh, and again, you know, I got a shout out in terms of internationally uh, after the U.S., we've got the most amount of NBA players uh, in, uh, you know, Canadian players in the NBA. So in terms of, um, you know, top success, you know, this is one of the fastest. I know later you'll hear from Mike, um, uh, sorry, Mike uh, Meeks, who is not only a gem as a person, um, but has been, also been very instrumental in, in that projection. So make sure you tune in later to hear from him. But I think uh, really when we start to take a look at this, we start looking at the quality of sport. And, um, you know, Rick Charles with this morning talked a little bit about, um, you know, what, how are we accountable in quality and how quality is so impactful and crucial to what you do in your programming. And this is really what this is about um, in that perspective. So quality sport, um, you know, having this idea around safe and inclusivity, which is unbelievably important in our social um, justice space right now. And, um, you know, really taking a hard look as coaches and administrators of how do we do um, and service social and racial injustices and, and where does that show up for us in our coaching and our programs. But, you know, also being well run, looking at uh, developmental appropriate, uh, appropriate, um, appropriateness, um, and that's where the LTAD really comes into live. And so, you know, I know we've seen a lot of this, and if you haven't, check this out, this diagram. Um, but it's really important to, to see the diagram, be familiar with it, but really understand it. And so, you know, it's important to know, um, you know, the different levels as you move through. So from active, uh, you know, uh, first touch to fundamentals, to learn to train, to train to train, and, and starting to go, you know, vertically. But it's just as important to understand where you fit and who you're talking about horizontally. And so, you know, looking at that first involvement in to learn to train and what that athlete looks like, you know, horizontally there versus what they look like very close to the edge of that diagram when we start talking about, um, you know, identifying and, um, you know, pushing them towards uh, and guiding them towards, um, you know, podium pathways. So I think that's also really important. And what, you know, this has allowed me to take, you know, my learnings from Canada and into this junior MBA grassroots program and why I wanted to try and merge the two of them together is that perspective. And so, you know, the junior MBA is really um, you know, motivated for first awareness in these 75 countries. You know, we talk about India where, um, you know, basketball is not a top five sport. Um, you know, we talk about, um, you, know, way, you know, looking at different areas where it is a top five sport. Um, and then what are some of those first involvements? Like what does those first involvements look like for athletes, but even for coaches and officials? Um, and how do we um, organize the training and deliver training that, you know, to, to make sure that they also know they're working with that first involvement. And um, Rick Charlesworth also, there's some really good points I took from his uh, this morning, but he also said, it is your job to make sport fun and interesting. And, you know, he was really talking from a, a lens of high, high performance, um, but I think it, it actually rings true in everything. Like as we go to administer sport, as we go to coach sport, as we go um, to be, you know, a, an official in, in sport, you know, it's our job to take that on. Um, and especially in that first involvement um, situation. So that's really where, um, you know, I kind of drew this line because, you know, really analyzing like who is it? Uh, and, you know, I'm gonna reference who a lot. 
who is it that I'm working with when I start getting involved in, um, you know, junior MBA in these 75 countries. And so, you know, I kind of made a little bit of an outline there and I challenge you to, to take a look at it as you move through your different, you know, assignments and coaching roles and um, different programs to really find uh, who is it in this area um, of the LTAD that you, that you are working with. And I think what's um, really interesting for us to know, and one of the key points that I just want to make sure that I don't, um, you know, gloss over, is the pathway for an athlete in this diagram is not, um, you know, from learn to train to train to train to train to compete, and then you know it's not always smooth. You can see there's some athletes that spend some time, um, you know, swirling around from that horizontal space within, you know, maybe a train to train and, and does a couple circles in there um, before deciding um, which path they want to pursue. And you just never know, like you're that first touch and first awareness. And, you know, one of the things we're really trying to take on is, you know, developing these international athletes and identifying these international athletes in, you know, my awareness of, of being, um, you know, knowing the, the complete, you um, pathways that, you know, we might identify, um, you know, a first awareness and a first involvement in, you know, the Dominican Republic. And that athlete could have a chance to go on to be competitive for life, but they could actually go into a podium pathway. Um, and so, you know, that importance of that first uh, involvement, even though it's like a little sliver off the side, uh, really can make a global impact. And so, you know, trying to take a look at that. So I mentioned who and how important who is. Uh, and this is something that Mike McKay, if you haven't had a chance to listen to him, um, is you know fantastic, works for Canada Basketball, and uh, you know was a mentor of mine while I was there and still is, um, but really introduced me to this, this equation and uh, has been extremely impactful. And, and what I really believe is the perspective of uh, the LTAD and its application. It, that's what changes it from going from a page document or a tab on your website, um, or you know, just patting yourself on the back to say that you know we know the LTAD. This um, you know equation really changes that. It, it takes it from you know something that's one dimensional into um, you know multi dimensional and um, you know something to keep looking back over. So. When we talk about who generally, um, as we go through the LTAD, it talks about, you know, who is, is a person and, and you take a look at them as they're physical. So what's going on for who physically we talk about, you know, technically we talk about tactically and, you know, technically is a little bit around the skill development um, area and, you know, tactically is more around strategy. Um, and then we, we talk about mental and social emotional and uh, this morning too, someone was talking, I, it slipped my mind as to who it was, but it was really talking about the importance of social and, um, you know, whether it's in coaches or whether it's in the athletes. Um, and I think it was Andre actually uh, was talking about how we really, we look at, you know, mental training, but what about the social emotional? Like how are our athletes, coaches, um, you know, and all administrators in terms of evaluating and where does that fit in terms of teaching is the, the importance of communication. And, you know, that really falls in that social emotional. So looking at these four pillars, when we start talking about who, and, you know, you can dive pretty deep in there. Um, so, you know, this is, uh, and a lot of these images come out of the LTAD if you're wondering where can you get them and where can you reference them. Um, so that document at the beginning, you can, um, you know, dig and dive into that one to take a look. But this is an image that came out of there. So really, you know, we look at, you know, who are we talking about? What are they doing when it talks about, you know, competition and training and how much time and into those four pillars, you know, what percentage of their training uh, are they doing? And, um, you know, really, you know, taking a look and analyzing that programming. So if you're there running an academy um, where you have multiple ages, you know, really identifying who they are in the LTAD and then starting to dive in, you know, what are they doing and at what percentages and how does that change um, depending on who you're, you're dealing with? And so, the two things that I would really challenge everyone to start taking a look at is who and then why. Like, why are you doing it? Why are they doing it? And starting to answer those questions. And I think um, generally as coaches and administrators, we look at this afterwards. So we like go and build what we're doing. We build our season and what it's gonna look like. And then we start taking who and start fitting them in. And sometimes we'll ask the question, why? Like, why are they doing this? You know, why am I doing this? Um, and I think this is actually the application key. This is the key to, to making it uh, live is actually asking it and identifying who. And within the LTAD, again, it's such a, a, a comprehensive document, but this who could, could go quite deep. 
Um, and so we talk about who in terms of multiple ages. So who are they biologically? Who are they developmentally? What's their training age? Uh, who are they around their training? And then when you're working with a team, um, you've got a lot of who's in there. And so can you identify all the who's in this environment before you decide what you're doing? Um, because I think it will really dictate what happens. And the why, like what's the justification, uh, justification behind it? Like why are, why are we doing any of this? Why are all the who's involved? Um, you know, a lot of times I think in youth sports, um, we sub in the why for like maybe taking home the plastic trophy. Um, you know, whereas is that really the why this is going on? And if we identify that is the why is maybe to develop them, to get them to the next stage. Maybe, uh, you know, in some circumstances, the why is to socialize them, uh, you know, the group of athletes with basketball and create love, uh, you know, for the game. You know, a lot of my whys really uh, fall around that first touch in awareness around basketball um, in some of our, our lesser basketball developed countries. And so what I do or what the junior NBA does in the, those countries change drastically because of those whys. Um, and then again, who in the population that, that we're involved with. And so I really challenge you to take some time to take a look um, and, and start defining who that is. And then start looking at what you're doing and how you do it um, and see if that uh, changes. You know, maybe it does uh, haphazardly, you know, line up or subconsciously you're able to do it. But I think it's, it's again, being conscious. And again, Rick Charlesworth really talked about asking questions. In order to get better, we need to ask ourselves really challenging questions and spend some time around that. Because um, again, what and how you do it is going to really change with who you're working with and why um, you got to work with it. And I think the one thing that I would change from, uh, you know, implementing this in Canada is now where, uh, you know, it really where uh, the who exists um, has, has changed dramatically. So you know, whether I talk about Brazil or um, Kurdistan, or we talk about the Philippines, um, you know, that where is starting to come um, into light for me of, of that importance where, you know, I think, you know, when I reach out to my Canadian, um, you know, counterparts, uh, you know, you think about it a little bit in terms of, you know, the Northwest Territories versus maybe Newfoundland versus Ontario and BC. And there's a little bit of where that shows up in there. Um, but I think my, my new challenge, which uh, I'm truly enjoying, uh, is, uh, you know, that where around the world and how important and how that plays into what and how um, you'll, you'll impact and, and change your delivery. And so, you know, a couple other images, uh, you know, just we're pulling out of the LTAD is this idea of when you start identifying the who, which is kind of on that right hand side, but again, is only one of the components of who, like there's, that's pretty thick, um, you know, once you dive into the who, but, you know, you know, figuring out what age and stage they're at is one of the who components. Then it starts to give you some guidelines as to what you do changes as, as you change who you're working with. Um, and so it becomes a lot more comprehensive. It's a lot thicker, it's a lot richer, um, but and most importantly, the impact of the outcome um, completely changes. And I think that's what we really started to see in Canada. And so a couple of questions I pulled out um, and points I pulled out of this morning's presentations is again, uh, asking those questions, um, insisting on quality. And I think that really is, um, you know, that, that uh, who and what equals, uh, uh, sorry, how and what equals who and why. And that is allowing quality and standing for quality to exist in your program and in your coaching, um, you know, environment. And, uh, you know, the other thing that Angus mentioned, uh, Mumford, uh, just a couple presentations ago, is that empathy with change and, you know, integrating LTAD and, you know, I've watched countries, you know, you know take it on and, you know, we've took it to, tried to take it on uh, in our sport. Um, but, you know, knowing that change, you know, he said specifically, it's hard and challenging. Um, you know, change is not easy, but that's okay. And I think the empathy around change and, and being comfortable with the uncomfortable is, is perfectly fine as well. And so, you know, looking at programs, which is where I'm at with a lot of this right now. So like the new programs that we're starting to take a look at, you know, looking at the old programs, but even too, as a coach is a practice planning. So, you know, when you go to put, um, you know, a selection of a drill into it, your season and everything like that, but even just every single practice plan, I choose this activity. Who is it that's involved in that activity? Why are they in that activity? Is it a specific skill that we're looking at? Is the why because they weren't able to perform it under a competition environment last time you tested it? Um, and then you can decide 
what you need to do uh, and how you're going to do it. And maybe some of those little elements of loading in your drill start changing because you identified the who, as opposed to saying, you know, we weren't great, let's say in basketball, uh, finishing under the rim. And then I just pick any drill around finishing on the rim. Um, that will change. What I do will change. And how I do that, if I really identify that who and why. So um, that's sort of my homework takeaway, uh, you know, to be able to, to take that on to make your LTAD live, um, to look at quality and ask yourself some, some tough questions, um, you know, around your training uh, environments. Dawn, fantastic. I got one question. You got 30 okay. seconds to answer. Okay, I know I've been watching that time and everyone's been on point and I, I couldn't fall out of line. You're good. Don't worry. Fantastic. Getting tons of great feedback. I got one question for you here sure. very quickly. Uh, Jennifer, wonderful presentation. Love the hard look expression. How do you address reconciling quality delivery with optimal performance outcomes and the assumption that focusing on quality means we aren't focused on performance? Yeah, I think this is a really uh, great question. I think everything's a balance, right? And, you know, uh, Wayne, I think you're talking actually about the art of coaching. And again, this is like when you get to take your paintbrush. And the thing about it is um, you get to try these things on and you start to see the outcome. And, you know, um, you know, with the LTAD, often we'll say like, and everyone says this really, it's Einstein, but, you know, you try and try and do the same thing and expect different results, like the definition of insanity here. And this is where um, you get to try and find optimal uh, results. And I think one of the things that I'll just give a bit of a, an example with Canada basketball, you know, we really started to try this on with high performance. And a lot of um, people will come out and say, you need to turn this only with um, recreational stuff. Like you can't do this in high performance. And we started to take a look at our under 16 teams and apply some of these LTAD and looked at who we're looking at at this age. And they were developmental athletes. And what development means is that they need to play they need to play 100 competitions before um, being able to really be able to contribute internationally on the podium. And so, you know, that means they need to play. And so what we're doing in terms of how much playing time and subbing, um, you know, occurs at our world championships at that age group had to change because when we took a hard look at who we're working with um, and why we're putting them and spending money to put them into these competitions, what we do in those competitions now changes. And I think that's sort of like a high performance and how do you um, start, um, you know, taking a look at where does it live there um, and, and, and doing it that way. So I hope that helps. If it doesn't, reach out to me. I know you've got an amazing, I'm a bit of a, a fan of Melody Davidson. So I absolutely do want to hug it any time of hers because I personally want to hear from her. Um, and I'm uh, really excited, you know, as a female in sport to be able to hear from her and have been following her career for a really long time. So thanks Wayne and your team for inviting me. And uh, again, can't wait to uh, touch base with you offline and hopefully in person at some point. Awesome, Dawn, fantastic. You can take a breath now. That was great, 100 miles an hour. Wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> Thank you, Don. Take care.